Starting videos are weird things. So what's she gonna talk about? Well, not really. <laughs> so, um, this is gonna be the last video of the year, and I thought I wanted to kind of go over it with some common mistakes. So whenever I'm teaching a person, I always find that there's all these random common mistakes that I encounter with my students. So I wanted to kind of compile a bunch of videos, um, just kind of go over them. So this is 20 common beginner mistakes that you may encounter, and hopefully this helps you learn how to fix them. Let's go. Number one, handstands and elbow freezes. So I see a lot of beginners, they try to jump over like this, okay? Here, they're trying to jump up to a handstand, trying to get over like this. Maybe you can get up here, I sit like this as well, or down here, elbow, like this, okay? And there's one little detail that they're missing that will take it from being there to have the freeze, and that's pulling your chest over your arms. So when you're here, Rather than back here, lean over your arms. So if you're struggling to get your handstands, your elbow freezes, and you're stuck back here, lean over, and then try. And then instantly, you'll be in that position. Down here, same thing. Start here, lean over, then try, okay? So this works in a lot of different places, but the most common places I find people struggle with it, handstands, elbow freezes. So again, if you're here, and you're trying to get up, try leaning forwards first, then go up. Number two, learn to use your bum and freezes. So, I'm gonna give you examples of this in headstand and handstand. So, doing it the wrong way, like this. A lot of people, hips up like this, okay? When you're like this, you're not controlled. Your legs are floating all over the place. What you wanna do is turn your hips inwards, like this, so your bum is out, okay? Bum push backwards, then you can do whatever freeze you want. You can go straight, everything in control. Don't let your hips fall behind you like that, okay? Also, if you're like this here, too far in your head, then that's also a fix. If you're here, put your bum back and it's gonna naturally pull your head back as well. Okay, so a lot of people, again, they lean too far forwards in their arms, pull it back like that, okay? Same thing, let's say you're in a handstand up here. And your legs are again super above you. Well, if you want to control it, it's gonna be really hard to control because when your hips are up like this, your back's arched. But if you bring your bum in to here, now I'm controlled. I can go wherever I want because my bum is in. Okay? So that sitting position is like, today, like this bum out, back straight. Number three, jump thread. So, a lot of people I find with jump thread don't realize about one kind of thing that really is important here. A lot of people try doing the thread without actually jumping up. So they tend to do this. They go and they land really low because they're not actually jumping up first, they're just threading fast. They land really low. So what you want to try to do instead is make sure you practice this. You gotta jump as high as you can because when you jump high, then you thread, you land where you normally would stand. But if you thread without jumping, you're always gonna land lower because that's how gravity works. So we have to go above our normal so we land on top rather than starting where your normal standing position is and then just threading because you're gonna land lower. So when you're here, instead of just threading right away, make sure you jump as high as you can, then thread at the top, okay? Just like a back flip, you gotta jump first before turning. So instead you're gonna go here, up, Turn, then you land normally. Next one, kip ups. So my number one reason I couldn't get kip ups as a kid was because I didn't realize you gotta use your arms a little bit too. So I was really good at doing the under part, which is this part, okay? But I was really bad at actually using my arms. My hands would always just do this. So if you find your kip up with something like this, or like that. The reason is, is you're flicking your hands off the ground. So to fix that, try a couple, just pushing straight down like that to bridge, and then put that into your kip up. So then it becomes that, because you're actually pushing into the ground, okay? So one more time, use your hands here, 
push. All right, next one. This is for people that are starting to want to learn how to create their own original moves. So a lot of people ask me how I create moves and movements, and some of it is freestyle and through this, but a lot of it is through either concepts or just literally sitting on the ground trying to figure out moves. Um, now, if you're using an actual concept, so maybe keeping your legs together, keeping one leg straight, stuff like that, I find sometimes I can get so stuck in that concept that I forget the whole reason I brought the concept in was to create a move or movement. So if you're trying to create moves and movements off of a concept and that brings you a new move or movement that is not has nothing to do with the actual concept, don't think the concept failed you because the concept literally just catapulted you into move, creating a move or movement, which was the original goal. So long story short, don't get so caught up in a concept that you forget the re point of having a concept is to create a move or movement. So if you land there, that's the point. Don't worry so much about this. Next one, rotating knee and your coffee runners are one step. I'll see when they sweep, they let this leg pivot out like this. So they turn, they go like that every time. See, their knee turns out every time you do it. That's gonna slow you down and it's gonna make your coffee grinder a lot more wonky because you're pivoting your hips to the side every time you sweep because you're not engaging this leg when this leg sweeps. Because when you sweep this leg, you let the momentum of this leg turn your whole body. You need to isolate that power and control this leg so that it stays face and center. So make sure this leg stays center the whole time and then you sweep. That's not only gonna make it faster, it's also gonna make it more controlled and more powerful. So watch, rather than this, you're gonna go like this. Next one, knee drop, corkscrew, spin up, balance. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of words to say. So with this one, I find a lot of people, they'll come here and they will understand how to spin like this, but they won't understand how to control it. So they end up like this. And kind of walking away. The reason they're doing that is because they're putting all their power and focus into the circular motion when forgetting the up and down is equally important. So if you don't control that and engage your muscles to go straight up, you're gonna spin off to the side. So when you're here, rather than thinking about turning circular, think about just standing up on the spot. So push down with your feet and just stand up like this. Because your legs already round up, so you have to unwind them. But you don't have to add extra power in. You can add extra power in, if you want, just focus on going straight up instead. Okay, you may have a little bit of a rotate like that, but that doesn't really matter. The, what matters is if you're stumbling off to the side, right? So when you go knee drop, spin up, hit, right? That's okay. If you have one step off, that's one thing. But again, the fix is rather than doing this and spinning so much, think straight up and down. So just stand up, find a spot in front of you, done. So when I was a kid, I auditioned for this like unschooled homeschoolers because I didn't go to school, um, kind of like talent show. And we had to each kind of create like a show or some kind of talent to showcase. So I created like a two and a half minute breaking piece and I had a elbow, robot elbow freeze in it that I slipped up on on stage. And there's one key reason why I slipped up and that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Right till I die, I'm not afraid of the cash I'm on the run, I'm chasing the thrills I'm hungry, I'm starving, I lust for the meal Lately I'm blue like the bills, yeah I'm elevated, overeducated I run the race for who I resonate with I So, when you're doing rollback elbow freezes There's one thing you have to understand You have to get your body, your chest Over top of your elbow and your arm So one thing's gonna happen if you don't do that That looks like this You're gonna slide, okay Maybe you can get all the way up there and just still slide. Reason being, you're not fully opening your chest and getting your body over top of that elbow. So how you fix that, if I literally go here, pushing forwards up here with this. So watch, push, you see? So when I push my chest forwards, it gets the majority of my body weight over my elbow right away. But if I just think backwards, my momentum just goes backwards. We have to go backwards and forwards. So backwards 
and force your chest. If you keep your weight back here, you're never gonna get on top of that. Next one is another verbal one. We're gonna talk about training versus conditioning and the common mistake that training equals conditioning, okay? Very different things. So for me, I thought if I just break hard enough, if I just do breaking period, that's all the conditioning that I'll need for breaking and I'll be set. Now, unfortunately, especially when you're beginning, if you do that, you're gonna run into a lot of issues like overuse injuries, lack of mobility issues, lack of flexibility issues, and that's gonna lead to long-term issues with your body. So how you fix that is by actually having mobility and conditioning drills within your movement. It could be an active stretch warm-up, which focuses on mobility. It could be morning routines where you do mobility work, conditioning work. Basically, think of it as support for the movement that we're doing with braking, because braking itself is a lot of performance movement, which is movement just kind of labors your body, doesn't necessarily strengthen it, okay? You want to do movements that counterbalance that by actually conditioning your body as well, okay? I've got lots of videos on that on my channel and there's lots of people you can ask about that. Feel free to comment down below if you have more questions about that and I'll try my very best to help you out. Next one, let's talk about spider freeze or any freeze that requires compacting your body into your arm like this. Right till I die, I'm not afraid of the casket. I'm on the run, I'm chasing the thrills. I'm hungry, I'm starving, I lust for the meal. Lately, I'm doing like the bear. So when we're doing this bending down motion, what we tend to do is we tend to collapse our shoulders and our chest downwards to try to connect into our arm or, my, or whatever we're connecting to, usually our arms, as fast and as convenient, conveniently as possible. But the issue with that is that we can pack too much and we end up having not enough space between the ground and our body. So for instance, I had one student and she was doing this freeze here and she was more flexible than me and she was like this, super flat, okay? And I mean, if you're doing some kind of yoga pose that could work, but she couldn't really hold it controlled. Reason being, she was dropping her, all her shoulders, all her shoulders, all the many of them. Same with Air Baby, doing it like this, okay? was leaning super far like this because her shoulder was super dropped. So the fix for that is you actually want to do this position here. And let's say this is what you're naturally doing. You want to push everything back. So you want to straighten your shoulders and push your back out like that when you're in the freeze, because then that's going to allow your body to push away from it, which is going to give you enough space to hold the position. So instead with that spider, what you want to do is you want to push out here strong like that. See? Then you can hold it as long as your muscles allow you to. Same with air baby. Okay, so you're here, like this, super low, push everything straight, tight, strong. Then when you want to, you can go one-handed, okay? Or whatever you want to do with it. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about just the prep to get into any kind of air power that you may want to do. Right till I die, I'm not afraid of the casket. I'm on the run, I'm chasing the thrills. I'm hungry, I'm starving, I lust for the meal. Lately, I'm doing like the bills, yeah. I'm elevated, overeducated. I run the race with who I resonate with. I break the bread with you to work the lace shift. Break the ground, shake up the simulation. We shake the sound, need to bring the- Now, I am the furthest away from an expert at air power. Well, maybe that's not completely true. But I'm not an expert at air power. But what I am decent at is at least understanding the basics and the mechanics of it. So, when you want to wind up like monkey into uh, anything with the in the handstand, so it could be just tornadoes, it could be in the 90s, it could be anything that gets to the handstand. We're just gonna talk about that part, okay? So just here to handstand, okay? Just how to do that cleanly. Now a lot of people, they try to do the same thing that we, just, we found earlier. Remember when we were doing our corkscrew spin up and we think this? Well, a lot of these movements, people naturally understand the circular motion better because we understand spinning. That's not that hard. One spin, that's easy for us to comprehend. But using our hips in these kind of motions and to pull our body up, that's a lot more challenging to understand, especially when you're doing that while spinning in a circular motion. Because you're trying to do two different things at once, right? The age old question, buddy. I'm not your buddy, guy. So what we want to do here is, rather than trying to get so much circular momentum first, understand the up and down first. That's this folding and unfolding motion. So what we're gonna do is first, literally, go to handstand, kick up. Can you do that? Cool. Now, kick up with your back foot like this. Kick, kick, okay? Then, lean over your arms like we learned earlier. So you can actually hold it. Then, do that with a little bit of an angle, like this. So you're gonna kick up, but you're gonna face 180 away from me, okay? So you're gonna go like this, up, into it first. 
Okay, so kick this leg, top corner, hard as you can. Kick, up. Now, once you can do that, all you gotta do is reintroduce the circular momentum into it, then start holding longer, then start making it pretty. So then you can go, kick, and you go all the way up right away, right? I almost overdid that one. So, again, the mistake is trying to do this before you understand up and down. Because it took me a while to even understand how to get my hips above my body. So learn how to get your hips above your body first, then bring it in. Okay, let's talk about baby freeze to headstand. Right till I die, I'm not afraid of the casket. I'm on the run, I'm chasing the thrills. I'm hungry, I'm starving, I lust for the meal. Lately, I'm blue like the bills. Yeah, I'm elevated, overeducated. This is one that thought I thought was so hard when I first started, and then I realized I was just not understanding it properly. <laughs> So, baby freeze to headstand is really easy when done correctly and really hard when not done correctly, as is most things. So, a lot of people, they think the same thing we just talked about. They try to do the circular before they do the up and down. So, the circular, the baby freeze headstand, could literally be like this. I go here, and they're like, okay, cool. So, I go like this, and I'm gonna push to hands, headstand. And they go up like that, okay? So, then try again, go like this. Up. The head, baby freeze headstand kind of looks like that. The issue is, is you're not stacking your body on top of yourself before you're going up, okay? So if you have strength and you have understanding of the movement, you can totally just force it, but with proper technique, you can achieve it really easily. So with proper technique, all you have to do to change that is first step, bring your knees together. Second step, bring your head to a headstand position. Third step, with your hips, learn this. So you're gonna lean your knees forwards, push your bum off like that, then, Fourth step, all you have to do is from that position, pull your knees to your stomach, and then you're in it. So again, that was here, you go head, knees, up. And that's all it is. Okay, let's talk about back taps. Right till I die, I'm not afraid of the casket. I'm on the run, I'm chasing the thrills, I'm hungry, I'm starving, I lust for the meal. Lately, I'm blue like the bills, yeah. I'm elevated, overeducated. I run the race with who I resonate with. I break the bread with Jesus, work the lation. Break the ground, shake up the simulation. We shake the sound, need a renovation. All that the and especially rolling back taps. Now, a lot of people think back taps, your leg is disconnected from your body. Now, this can be the case for some people, but when you do it like this, you don't have that rolling motion that looks so nice, okay? It tends to be this disconnected one, two motion. But instead, you want one, 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 one. Now, how you switch this is rather than going like this, because some people start from your back and they go, okay, I'm on my back now. I'm gonna go push and then go up. So I'm gonna go push and roll over. Now that can be good when you first start to learn how to do it, but eventually you want it to become one motion. So rather than starting from your back and or landing like this, going, over so I can barely even do it because it's just so awkward for me now. Rather than do it like that, and if that is your issue, where you find it going like this, and try to get over to do it like this, that's because you're disconnecting your kick from your tap. Or if your back taps again, look like this. Okay, instead, do it all at once, like this. So when you go, let's just go from a stab. For first, you go, Tap like that. Your foot lands exact same time your back and head lands, okay? So again, chain. If you're going from standing, same idea. Going one, okay? Because then you can tap over right away, like this. So next one, let's dive into a bit of a footwork one. Right till I die, I'm not afraid of the casket. I'm on the run, I'm chasing the thrills. I'm hungry, I'm starving, I lust for the meal. Lately, I'm blue like the bills, yeah. I'm elevated, overeducated. I run the race with who I resonate with. I break the bread with Jesus, work the lation. Break the ground, shake up the simulation. We shake the sound, need a renovation. All that the this one's a little bit more intermediate and advanced too, because I see this issue even with people like me sometimes when I'm not thinking and I'm trying new movement, I can kind of mess this up a little bit. So we all know that our natural breaking squat is toes on your bum, heels touching your bum. So what a lot of people do is when they start doing fast CCs and stuff, they'll go like this. CC and then they bring their foot here. Then they go in like this and then try the other side. So it becomes like this. So the issue with that is that when you start trying to go quicker, your weight's not fully over this side because your foot's not underneath your bum fully. So you start doing, it looks like that, okay? So how you fix that is when you CC, 
bring your foot right underneath your bum, and then here. Same as you can kind of come in with any movement that requires your feet coming under your bum, but this is the easiest example, so that's why I'm doing it. So let's go again. Properly, you go under your bum, under your bum. Whip that really fast. Straight under. Here, 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 here. Versus that, okay? Little details, but little details of what makes someone advanced or intermediate what was beginner before, right? Those little things really matter. Stay focused. All right, last verbal one of the video. Let's talk about having boring flow. So if you watch a decent amount of beginners, you'll find one thing in common. Usually, person looks beginner because of a couple different factors, but the one thing that we can really usually tell when someone is really beginner is their flow is super monotone, okay? So why would a flow be monotone? Well, it would usually be because you're thinking about everything and you're doing a lot of controlled pace. It's all one monotone point of view. It's all one pace, like this. Everything from tops to go downs to footwork to freezes is all can slow, controlled, methodical, one pace. Could also be all quick and one pace as well. Boring doesn't necessarily always mean slow, it can also mean quick too, right? Some people, they go fast, 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 just steroids stop breaking the whole time, and that's also boring. So, just like an exciting movie, or a good movie, you have to have storyline, you have to have dialogue, you have to have ups, downs, waves, okay? So make sure when you start thinking a bit more about your style, ask yourself, do you change your tempo? Is your movements always one speed or do you have ups and downs? Is every move super powerful or are some soft? Are some hard hitting? Are some soft hitting? Are some exciting? Are some more chill? Are some flowy? Are some stiff, right? The more you can differentiate that and the more contrast you can add in there, contrasting moves and movements, the better and more exciting it is gonna be for the audience to actually watch and enjoy because you're taking us on this whole storyline versus just being like, hey, this is my style, it's all this pace. Instead you're like, I'm here, now I'm here, and I'm here now, and then I'm really here, and then I'm chilling, and I'm tight, and I'm smooth, and I'm flow. So really start thinking about that. Is your flow and your movement monotone, or is there lots of ups and downs? Is it a movie, or is it just a boring blueprint? Next up, we're gonna talk about tabletop to handstand. The same way that we did our hips going up before circular motion, we gotta do the same thing now, but we gotta do hips up before we push. Because if we push out from this position, this is what's gonna happen. Okay? Because we're just kicking this way. But we have to actually get our hips above our head and then push up. So you've got to rotate your body to this vertical position, then you push up versus pushing from where you are. So a lot of people will try to do this. They'll go here, and they'll come up. The feet will come down like this. So go here, and push, okay? So how you adjust that is you've got to get to this position. So then instead, all you have to do is seize all your hips to the sky, okay? So that's going from here, push straight up, versus pushing before you go vertical, okay? Okay, so let's talk about keeping your head down for ground power now. So this is something I struggle with a lot growing up because I only learned power from doing more bouncy power, but the issue with doing more bouncy ground power is that you tend to bounce more so your head comes off the ground. So you wanna start with drills I've done in my last videos, like this. Same thing for munch mills. If you're doing munch mill stuff or other ground power, same idea. Let's say you're doing a munch mill, where you're going like this, and you don't know how to keep your head down, well, start with doing a drill like this. Head up, back down, okay? Did you notice how when I came back down, my head's up here? You wanna keep it down like that. So instead, start from this kind of position, go up, keep it down like that. So you're looking a bit more upwards and keeping your head more flat. 
Then all you got to do is when you do it with momentum, do the same thing, okay? Because if you don't do this, you smash your head, hurts a lot, okay? Next up, we have a flare mistake. Which happens when you don't switch your hands fast enough and you allow your weight to stay on one arm too long, which in turn brings your hips to the side. Looking like this. Okay, so you notice I end up facing here, and again, go like that. So the way to correct that is number one, don't twist your hips, same as that coffee grinder. Kick straight to the front instead, okay? So that gets fixed by going like this. Okay, number two, switch your hand faster. So bring all your weight to the right hand right away. Remember, as soon as you get through the front, you must switch to your right. Looks like this. So you switch it by going, like that. Last mistake, improper hand placement for your flares. So, a lot of time, people will end up putting their hands down too close to flares. I've done this before, and that cuts off your power for your flare, and it ends up having imbalanced flares. Now, how do you know if this is happening? Film yourself, and see if your hands are Closer than shoulder length apart, okay? So this is my shoulders here. Boom, usually I go shoulder length apart and like a half hand on each side out further, okay? If they, you're not hitting that position, your hands are too close together, how you fix that, you literally just have to place it like this, do this motion. Rather than placing straight down, think here, because you may be thinking straight down, but it's actually going inwards, okay? Because sometimes straight down for us is like this, when in reality straight down is here, okay? So, and maybe you need it straight down a little bit outwards because you have to overcorrect an undercorrection, okay? So, hands too close to where? Looks like this. You see? Also, a good way to tell if that's happening, if you find you're traveling over top of this arm, watch again. See how I'm kind of traveling this way a little bit too much? That usually happens because your hands are too close together. So again, now watch the difference and put my hand down over here. To the future so the next day i definitely forgot um one of them so we're adding it in now <laughs> so um this is baby free switch placement proper placement for your baby okay this last one we're doing is baby free switch proper placement okay so for baby freeze switches, we're going from here to here, okay? Now there's two different places you can stab in baby freeze. There's here, and then there's in your stomach, like that. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> so um, a lot of the time when people are switching, they actually forget that when you're switching between them, a lot of the time, your elbow requires a switch over your hip. Now, if you don't do this switch over your hip, you may never be able to get back up. Now, I have some students that really struggle with getting back up when they go down because they go on their hip like this, and then when they switch, they drop to their stomach, and they can't get back up because they can't get back to their leg. You just have to make sure you switch from your stomach to your hip when you come back up. So from here to stomach, or else you get stuck doing that. All right, everyone, that's all from me. Hope you've enjoyed my new mural. Shout out to Be More Tricky. If you've known my channel for very long, you know Tricky from my crew. He's a super sick graph artist as well. Hence, the mural behind me. It's looking great. I'm really, really happy about it. All right, everybody, I had the majority of these mistakes as a kid when I was going through breaking, and I problem solved these for my students all the time. So I'm hoping that some of these were helpful for you. And maybe one of these was something you're exactly looking for. Hopefully it was. If not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Um, this is your boy, Mace Manino, for now and crew. Have a great rest of 2020. Um, hope you're all staying safe out there. Crazy world we're in, but gotta make the best of it. This will be the last video of 2020. I'll see you guys in 2021. Until then, take care, stay safe, and keep breaking. Love is love.